Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. Sorry to alarm you today. I know it looked like a character out of a B-rate horror movie, but I'm trying to make the point today that we as human beings often live behind a mask. We project an image. We veil our faces. Ever since the days of Adam and Eve, we've been hiding behind our fig leaves, and it's very true today, just as much as it was then. In fact, in a social media age, this is exacerbated. I was reading some research um, this week about how they uh, looked at um, 14 to 15 year old teenage girls, found that a third of them show signs or symptoms of psychological distress. That's a, a 10% rise from a decade ago. And they think that this is perhaps linked to social media, the rise of social media and how girls are obsessed with posting selfies on Instagram or Facebook and they judge their self-worth on the number of likes that they get. Um, it's disturbing, sad, isn't it? But that's, a tr that's true of us all, really, that we, we project an image and we're painfully aware of the discrepancy between that projected image and the ugliness of our, of our inner lives, um, especially if we compare that to uh, the glory of others' projected image and we, we find we fall short of that. Uh, I'm not aware of the irony of blocking, vlogging about this. Um, perhaps some of my motives are good, um, but there's probably quite a bit of self-projection going on here and now, wanting you to think I'm successful or full of wisdom or making progress in the spiritual life, when in actual fact I'm often painfully aware of my own hypocrisy, of my own weakness and my own sinfulness and fallenness. I feel disappointed with myself fairly constantly. And, uh, and maybe you feel the same today. Sometimes the spiritual life feels like we make two steps forwards and th two steps back, if not three steps back. We look back a year or a decade and we think, have I made any progress? Or have I even slipped backwards in my spiritual life? Well, our passage today speaks a word of hope to us. Paul, writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, um, uh, uses this analogy of veiled faces. He talks about Moses and how Moses went up the mountain of God, and as he looked upon God, his face shone with the glory of God. And when he came back down the mountain, he was luminous with it. You know, he was buzzing on the Geiger counter. And actually, that's when he put on his veil to uh, protect the people who were alarmed at him, disturbed by his glowing face. Um, Paul uses this analogy for the sinfulness and hard-heartedness of people that we live behind veils today. And he says, actually, as we turn to God, as we believe in Jesus, that veil falls away. And he says this wonderful thing in verse 18. He says, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. What a wonderful promise this morning. Maybe you feel today... Maybe you're thinking, can I change? Well, the promise of the scripture is, yes, yes, you can. In fact, you are being changed. It might not always be obvious. It might not always be measurable in a human way. It might not always be linear or straightforward. But this is the fact that God's work in you is one of sanctification. And as you turn towards him, as you look at him, you become what you look like. You become more and more like the image of Christ. That's what discipleship is. And God is achieving that in you. He who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So be encouraged this week. Turn to God and take a step towards him.